In recent years, there's been a host of continually growing litanies of AI codes of ethics, guidelines, and principles, while little is being done on bridging this theory practice gap. Our research aim in this project is to find a nexus and use the value-sensitive design approach as a methodology for translating more abstract philosophical principles into practice. Past research has explored how VSD can be applied to specific technologies like energy systems, mobile phones, architecture projects, manufacturing and augmented reality systems, just to name a few. And it's been proposed as a suitable design framework for future technologies, both near and long term. Examples include its exploratory application to nanopharmaceuticals, nanomanufacturing, intelligent agent systems, and less futuristic autonomous vehicles. Although these studies do provide a th useful theoretical basis for how VSD can be applied to specific technologies, they don't account for the unique ethical and technical issues that various AI systems present. There has been ample discussion about the risks, benefits, and impacts of AI, although the exact effects of AI on society are neither clear nor certain. But what is beyond the doubt is that AI is and will continue to have a profound impact on human flourishing broadly construed. AI is a nebulous term and often used haphazardly. We're interested in AI technologies that are based on machine learning, which allows such technologies to learn on the basis of interaction with and feedback from its environment. These learning capabilities pose specific challenges for VSD. In particular, AI technologies are more likely than not to acquire features that were neither foreseen nor intended by their designers, and in addition, the way they learn and evolve may be opaque to humans. In order to address these challenges, we suggest that a set of AI-specific design principles need to be added to VSD. We propose to build on the significant headway that has been recently made in the numerous AI for social good projects that are becoming popular in various research circles. However, AI for social good is difficult and its underlying principles are still fuzzy given the multiplicity of research domains, practices and design programs. Yet some work has already been done to narrow down the essential AI for social good factors. So to clarify, what I want to propose here is that VSD provides a principled approach that diverse design teams can adopt, regardless of domain, to formalize their approach to AI for social good along these factors. So let's begin with value-sensitive design. Value-sensitive design is a principled approach to take values into ethical importance into account in the design of new technologies. At the core of the VSD approach is what is often called the tripartite methodology of empirical, conceptual, and technical investigations. And these investigations can be carried out consecutively, in parallel, or iteratively, and involve empirically investigating the relevant stakeholders, their values, and their value understandings and priorities, conceptual investigations into values and possible value trade-offs, and technical invest investigations into value issues raised by current technology and possible implementation of values into new design. For the case of AI, some considerations are important when it comes to identifying values in VSD design processes of AI technologies. First, there's now widespread consensus that AI raises specific ethical issues, which are not, or at least to a much lesser degree, raised by more conventional information and communication technologies. This has two implications for the issue of value identification. First, the original VSD list of values does not suffice for AI. Instead, one may, for example, take the values identified by the EU high-level expert group on the ethics of AI as a starting point, respect for human autonomy, prevention of harm, fairness, and explicability. Secondly, some value lists would seem desirable in the case of AI to ensure that the typical ethical concerns that arise from AI are not overlooked. And this is not to say that other values should not be included in the design of AI applications. They should. And some form of bottom-up elicitation may be relevant here, but it should be supplemented by principles that ensure typical AI issues are properly addressed. Secondly, challenges posed by AI for VSD. AI applications pose specific challenges when it comes to VSD. This is particularly due to the self-learning capabilities of AI. This complicates the reliable integration of values in the design of technologies that employ AI. Self-learning algorithms may be biased due to the way they learn. They may, for example, be biased because the training set for the algorithms is not representative or skewed. In a form of, if a form of supervised learning is chosen, for example, it's conceivable that algorithms learn the bias that was already in human judgments that are used for the supervisory learning. 
But even if these potential sources of bias have been excluded, it can be guaranteed, it can't be guaranteed that the resulting algorithms are not biased, certainly not if a form of non-supervised reinforcement learning is chosen. One issue is that the resulting artificial neural network may be described as following a certain rule, even if this rule was never encoded nor can be easily derived from the variables in the artificial neural network. In other words, it's conceivable that the resulting algorithm can be described as following a rule that is somehow biased without this result being foreseeable or even clearly discernible. This means that bias in algorithms may be emergent and opaque. Emergent in the sense that it is an unintended and unforeseeable consequence from the way the algorithm has learned. Opaque in the sense that it not may be clearly or immediately clear for humans from inspection of the algorithm or artificial neural network that is biased. Due to their self-learning capabilities, AI systems, in particular those powered by machine learning, may develop features that were never intended nor foreseen or foreseeable by their designers. Moreover, these unintended features may not always be discernible as the way they be due to specific ways the algorithm has developed itself that are even hard or impossible for humans to fully understand. The important point is that addressing emergence and opaqueness requires a set of design principles, or rather design norms, that are needed for traditional technologies. Some of these principles relate to technical or design requirements, other to organization of the design process, and the further life cycle of a product, like continued monitoring. And still others may have to do with what AI techniques are to be used or not. So let's move on to the AI for social good, meaning and factors. The seven factors that are particularly relevant here for the design of AI towards the social good are one, falsifiability and incremental deployment. Secondly, the safeguard against the manipulation of predictors. Thirdly, receiver contextualized information. Similarly, four, receiver contextualized explanation and transparent purposes. Fifth, privacy protection data subject consent. Situational awareness, number six, and seven, human-friendly semanticization. The seven factors, although discussed separately, naturally co-depend and co-vary with one another and are not to be understood as rank-ordered hierarchy. Similarly, the seven factors each relate in some way to at least one of the four ethical principles that the EU high-level expert group on AI lay out, respect for human autonomy, prevention of harm, fairness, and explicability. This mapping onto more general values of ethical AI is not insignificant. Any divergence from these more general values has potentially deleterious consequences. What the seven factors are meant to do then is to specify these higher order values into more specific design requirements. So, in order to address the challenges posed for VSD by AI, we propose a somewhat adapted VSD approach. One, by integrating the AI for social good principles into VSD as design norms, from which more specific design requirements can be derived. Secondly, distinguish between values to be promoted by design and values to be respected by design to ensure that resulting design does not only not do harm, but also contributes to doing good. And thirdly, extending value-sensitive design to encompass the whole life cycle of an AI technology in order for it to monitor unintended value consequences and to redesign the technology if necessary. Let's look at some of the features of the overall process. So integrating AI for social good principles as design norms, we propose to map the AI for social good factors onto the norms category used to translate values into technical design requirements and vice versa, using a values hierarchy. Likewise, an entire typology available for practices and methods learning from principles for AI for social good, those four factors. Distinguishing between values to be promoted and values to be respected in order for the AI for VSD approach to be more than just avoiding harm and actually contribute to social good, an explicit orientation is required to socially desirable ends. Such an orientation is still missing in current proposals for AI for social good. We propose to address this by an explicit orientation to the sustainable development goals as proposed by the UN as a best approximation of what we collectively believe to be valuable societal ends. Extending VSD to the entire life cycle in order to address emergent and possibly unintended properties that AI systems acquire as they learn. We propose to extend VSD to the full life cycle of technologies to keep monitoring the potential unintended value consequences and to redesign the technology if necessary. 
This adapted approach to BSD process is illustrated here. Given that each AI system's design has different uses and thus different value implications, this illustration serves as a general model that engineers can use throughout their design program. So let's briefly illustrate how to do this with a timely example of a contact tracing app. So the SARS-CoV-2 contact tracing app in Germany on Tuesday, April 7th, 2020, the Robert Koch Institute, the RKI, which is the German Federal Research Institute responsible for disease control and prevention, prompted German citizens with smartphones and smartwatches to voluntarily share their health data to keep track of the spread of COVID-19 virus. The RKI is rolling out a new app called Corona Data Spend the Corona data donation, which allows users to voluntarily and pseudonymously share their health data to aid scientists in determining symptoms correlated with COVID-19 infections and its distribution across the nation, as well as to gauge the efficacy and the amelioration measures. The app allows the users to record their age, height, weight, gender, health metrics, such as physical activity, body temper, sleep behavior, and heart rate, as well as their postal codes. The RKI is explicit that the collected data of individual users are labeled as pseudonyms, that the personal information of these users, such as their names and addresses, remain private through the de-identification of user data through artificial identifiers, leaving the possibility of re-identifying data subjects. Context. As mentioned, VSD acknowledges that technology design can begin with the discrete technology itself as a starting point, the context of use or a certain value. In this case, the context of use can be understood as the motivating factor behind the technological solution. Simply put, the outbreak, spread, and eventual declaration of a global pandemic of COVID-19 provides the context of use and development. The immediate health crisis demands swift action to be taken in order to stifle further spreading, but also the desire to return to less strict, uh, strict measures at some point post-pandemic. A prima facie analysis of the values at play here can be said to be tensions between more immediate public health and economic stability and prosperity. The development of an app can specifically be targeted at trying to balance this tension, as a tracking and tracing app may assist in resuming certain societal activities, like traveling or work, in a way that still reduces health risk as much as possible by tracing who is potentially infected. Secondly, value identification. Values that are to be promoted by the design, for example, deriving from the uh, sustainable development goals. The design of Corona Death and Spend can be said to be part of the large network of support, Social Development uh, Sustainable Development Goal 3, Good Health and Well-Being, which aims, among other objectives, to provide a more efficient funding of health systems, improve sanitation and hygiene, increased access to physicians, and more tips on ways to reduce ambient pollution. Albeit an impromptu technology introduced as a response to an immediate context, in situ development and use may be, uh, encourage applications outside the original context, for example, outside of Germany and also for other illnesses. Values that should be respected, in particular those values that have been identified in relation to AI, respect for human autonomy, prevention of harm, fairness and explicability. Respect for human autonomy, to begin with, in the context of AI systems, autonomy refers to the balance between the power humans have in making decisions and how much of that power is abdicated to those systems. Not only should machines be designed in such a way as to promote human autonomy, but they should be designed also to constrain the abdication of too much human decision-making power, particularly where human decision-making outweighs the value of the efficacy of the machine's decision-making capabilities. This is aligned with SDG number 16, peace, justice, and strong institutions, particularly in 16.7 to ensure responsive, inclusive, participatory, and representative decision-making at all levels. Thirdly, prevention of harm or non-malfeasance is framed as preventing potential risks and harms and manifesting themselves in systems by understanding their capabilities and limits. Often questions of data privacy and security are evoked as to how individuals control their personal data. RKI is explicit that it does not collect personal user information beyond the level of postal codes to understand the transmission densities. However, privacy concerns still exist at the community level nonetheless, particularly in the practices used to store, use, share, archive, and destroy collected data. Risks of regional gerrymandering, targeted solicitation, and their discrimination are not excluded solely on account of delimiting data uh, collection to the postal code level. Harm may also occur due to specific ways the app is used, 
particularly if the app is only used to map the spread of the virus, but also to trace individuals as potential bearers of disease and risk factors. Fairness, although ambiguous and often described and defined in different ways and specific, uh, specified across different points in the life cycle of AI and the relation with human beings, fairness can be understood as being framed as justice. Justice can be summed up in at least three ways. One, using AI to correct past wrongs, such as eliminating unfair discrimination. Secondly, ensuring that the use of AI creates benefits that are, uh, that are shared or at least shareable. And thirdly, prevent, uh, preventing the creation of new harms, such as undermining of existing social structure, which is aligned with SDG 16, peace, justice, and strong institutions. And explicability. The employed AI system in order to support the other values must be explicable. This means that its inner workings must, must be intelligible, not opaque. And there must be at least one agent that is accountable for the way it works. They understand the way it works and are thus responsible for its actions. Context specific values that are not covered by one and two, which is the third part, by which derive the analysis of specific context in phase, in particular values held by stakeholders. Although it was announced by the German government that Corona death and spend would be voluntary, scholars also pointed out that the app might nevertheless be used to allow access to certain services, like public transport, or might become required by employers for their employees, which would then endanger the voluntariness of use. Such potential uses might in turn also invite individuals to not properly use the app, for example, in order to keep maximum freedom of movement and to conceal certain contacts by turning off their phones which again might contribute to health risks. Many of the risks and potential side effects mentioned by scholars regarding contact tracing apps map on the values we already discussed, in particular health values, non-maleficence, justice, autonomy, and explicability. For example, a false sense of security relates to the value of health, then privacy and voluntariness to the value of autonomy, while stigmatization and discrimination relate to fairness. Nevertheless, there might also be values like the right to association and, for example, security against hacking or misuse that are less clearly related to one of the values, although they can perhaps be subsumed under non-maleficence. What the issues particularly show is that we should consider values in context in order to gain full awareness of what is at stake and how to translate these concerns into tangible design requirements. In this specific case, it is, for example, particularly important what behavioral effects apps will have. And it's also crucial to view the values in a broader systems context. In this sense, even if a contextual value analysis may not reveal completely new values, it will nevertheless be crucial in understanding how values are exactly at stake for a specific application on how these values are to be understood in that specific case and how they are to be translated into design requirements. Thirdly, in this process, formulating the design requirements. Here, the value of non-maleficence was chosen as the more abstract value that was then translated through two of the AI for social good factors, five and six, and then into technical design requirements in this paradigm. AI for social good factors are adopted as norms and rightly so, given that they are framed as imperatives. Naturally, any given context of use, value, and specific technology will implicate a number of combinations. There's no exclusive nor exhaustive route for satisfying a value translation. And it can move both bo uh, bottom up as well as top down. Situational fairness could just as easily and probably should be used as the normative tool for operationalizing other values such as explicability, transparent data set collection use, storage, as well as justice, which can be understood as promoting non-discriminatory laws and practices through unbiased compliance. For example, using fairness warnings or fair mammal, which have recently been proposed. At a functional level, the normative structure of AI for social good norms supports avoiding most ethical harms associated with AI systems. However, they per se do not guarantee at all that new AI applications will actively contribute to social good. The higher level values that I spoke about in conjunction with related real operalization of the sustainable development goals allows more salient AI systems to be developed that contribute to social good. This multi-tiered approach of coupling AI-specific values, stakeholder values, and their application to sustainable development goal attainment via AI for social good norms can mitigate dangers posed by ethical whitewashing that occurs through the legitimization of AI technologies that do not respect some fundamental ethical principles. 
And finally, in this process, prototyping. Prototyping involves building mock-ups of technology in question according to the design requirements laid out in the previous step. This means that the technology is moved from the more controlled space of the lab or design space and in situ, which, of course, implicates direct and indirect stakeholder values. At this point, various design decisions may prove to be recalcitrant or unforeseen recalcitrant behavior emerges that implicates other values. At this point, given the technology's limited deployment, it can be recalled into the design space so that the corrected modifications can be implemented. Regarding Corona data spend, the crisis situation that underlies the motivation behind the app's inception invites direct deployment rather than prototyping, given the stakes at play and the urgency for amelioration. Although tempting, this may ultimately be unwise, given the significant risks that AI systems possess, particularly ones predicated on such large quantities of data subjects. Small-scale deployment or in-house testing of efficacy and fidelity of the app's underlying systems are necessary, albeit not sufficient, condition for responsibly developing an AI system of this type to ensure that it can achieve as much as possible positive ethical and societal values. What should be particularly stressed is that prototyping should not be restricted to testing the proper technical functioning of an app, but should also take into account behavior as well as societal effects and ultimately the effects of these values. Here, the tracing and tracking app is a case in point. While some value issues like privacy may be addressed through technical choices like pseudonymization, local storage of data and automatic destruction of data after a certain period of time, some of the other value concerns require insights into the behavior effects of such an app. Such behavioral effects are not very hard, uh, if impossible, to reliably predict with some form of prototyping, at least small-scale testing in situ. It would therefore be advisable to go through a number of trials for such an app that scale up from very small-scale testing with mock-ups to testing in test settings of increasing size, not unlike what is done in medical experiments with new drugs. Such testing trajectories might also reveal new values that are at stake and need to be taken into account and so trigger a new iteration of the cycle. The danger of ethical whitewashing, which is already visible on web pages of many large companies, is what is to be avoided. In addition to these two tiers of values, we've argued that it's important to pay attention to contextual values, or at least to the contextual interpretation of the values from the two mentioned tiers. This is necessary to understand why certain values are at stake for specific application and how to translate the relevant values into design requirements. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this talk and we hope that you enjoyed it.